Hello everyone, Samantha here. I pray all is well with you. This is a spontaneous video. I'm going to be sharing, reading James chapter 3 and sharing based on that um, chapter, James chapter 3. Father God, thank you for you. Thank you for your word. Lord God, I ask that you help me to read your word and to share what you would have me to share, to understand your word. I ask for revelation and I pray for those as well that are watching that you will bless them, Lord God. Um, you know, that they will get what you want them to get out of us reading and um, me sharing what you place on my heart. I ask that we will not just be hearers of your word, but do us also that we will live your word. To your praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. I ask and pray. Amen. So, I want to share two things. It's on my heart to share two things. Um, even before I read the chapter, and um, you'll make the connection. I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us. In, I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He's not a thing. He's a person. God in the third person. Um, I'm going to trust Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. And to um, help us make connections. Because I know that sometimes when I try to help individuals make the connection. Not saying that it's wrong. But sometimes when I'm, I can sense when I'm, I'm pushing it. And I just need to trust God. To help the individual make the connection. Not that I won't be a part of it. But to stay within my boundaries. So. Um, that he gives me. So. The dream. Now. The dream that this. I'm not going to share the dream in totality. And I had this dream a while ago. And I'm gaining some more understanding. Of it. I did got, ask God for interpretation. And I did get something back then. When I read, started reading um, James chapter 3, um, some time ago, it, the dream came back to me. And I did take a look and read through the chapter when it was on my heart to come on a few minutes ago. And, you know, um, the dream came back to my remembrance again. Now, in real life, the in the dream, the who there were several people in the dream. And the person that I was interacting with the most in the dream was something that was literally happening in the past. So, let me go into the dream. In a dream, this it, the person and I, we were unintentionally, listen to what I'm saying, unintentionally talking, um... We were talking about some individuals, but not in a deg degrading way, right? Our harm was unintentional. Our, get what I'm saying? Our harm was unintentional. And we were talking to pray. We were talking to pray. We were talking, we were talking about things that were that we believed was wrong and we needed to consult God to help them and to help all parties involved. Now, outside of the dream, this is something that was taking place. Now, like I said, this was a while ago. Back into the dream. So, what you see is what was in the dream was something that I was and this person was engaging in. God is so good. Next thing you know, there was like a fire alarm in the dream. And we were like, there's a fire. There's a fire. And we have to go and put out this fire. So we was running here and there trying to put out this fire and warn people. But the thing about it was, in the dream, 
we were the only ones that heard the alarm and saw the fire. Somehow in a dream, and I, 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 I'm going to only explain what I know, what I know I can explain. There was really no fire. It was what we saw and what we thought. But other people were like, everything is okay. There's no fire. There was no, there was no fire. When it came to, they were right and we were wrong. Back then, and I woke up and I was like, what in the world was that? Back then, when I had the dream, and I was praying for interpretation, it was in my spirit was that, for lack of better words, we made a mountain out of a molehill. And it was what we were doing, like the conversation was wrong. Now I'm saying praying is wrong, but there was something going on with this individual and I, how we was perceiving things. Now again, our intention was not to harm. That was not our intention. We legitimately thought that we were doing something good now move now fast forward when I read James chapter 3 and that dream came to me I got better understanding we created fires in our own lives a series of things began to happen to the both of us and what we didn't realize was that in connection to with these people what we didn't realize was that we created fires in our lives. Things begin to... You know how a fire burns up? Relationships with the individuals sort of started disintegrating. And what it was because our tongue created a fire. Now, other people didn't see anything wrong in the dream. Because on their end, it was nothing going on. Like, but that alarm and that it was a fire was for us to see you are stirring your tongue is creating a fire. They can't see it because that's not what they're doing. Be sensible and turn off the flow. Now, that's powerful because sometimes we think because we are mentioning Jesus and we are bringing in spiritual practices into a situation, that makes it of God. When in fact, it could be our own arrogance. Um, our righteousness is like filthy rags. So, and it could be our perspective that's mixed with legalism hear what I'm saying because the flesh is the flesh is 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 disgusting you know that and I'm talking about our skin I'm talking about you our sinful nature right it could fool us the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it and we are those of us that are Christians yes we're born again we're filled of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. However, that does not mean that we can't stumble. And that we don't sometimes have our own um, way of thinking about things that seems godly. And it's not until God comes in and he sanctifies our thoughts in, in, in that context. So... We created this fire. <laughs> Other people didn't have that fire. They didn't see it because 
They were doing what they needed to do. And see, this is the thing. Even if someone is struggling with something, and maybe these people, or maybe you're dealing with people that are not Christians and they're doing something wrong. I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray for them. We should. But sometimes we cross our boundaries. We talk with other people. And, and, and not just for Christians, but not just for non-Christians, but even Christians. Because we all we all could be making mistakes and doing things wrong and we don't know it. But sometimes we get into these conversations with others. And I've mentioned this before, that we don't need to be having that all we needed to simply do was go to God in prayer. If this person is not a danger to themselves or to others, there are some things where we just want to talk about it because our flesh want to feel, we want to feel like we're better than them. We want to feel like we're wiser and we know better. And we want to voice our opinion when in fact God is like, that's all flesh. You don't need to talk with that individual about that person's struggle or what they're going through. Like, what is that going to help? Like, why are you having this conversation? And I've said this before, and right now it's stirring up in my heart because we got to repent of this stuff because we could be creating fires like in a relationship. Let me tell you, why would God have someone that I talk trash about or don't like connect with me? Then we were like, what's wrong with them? They don't want to have anything to do with me. They, because you're talking about them. And don't you think the Holy Spirit is going to... You think he's only he only loves you? Do you think that you the only one that get revelation and understanding of stiff stuff in your spirit? In my spirit, I feel. So how you don't know God is telling them, you know what? They don't care for you too much. They are not having pleasantries, thoughts, and conversations about you, you need to keep your distance until, because what's going on there is, is funky and so yes so we had created this fire and we could have just went to God and been praying, we need to get into these conversations like these um how can I say legalistic prayer meetings just go pray if you really care that much you didn't have to wait for nobody to pray for that individual you so strong in the Lord <laughs> you got you got we all got the power I mean no matter how feeble we are we 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 all got you Christians we have we got Holy Ghost we have them we can just go and pray and if God tells us to go get prayer for you know then that's fine. But sometimes it's just not that. And we know we know we don't need to do it. Some of us that do those um, practices. So I know I said a lot before I got into the world. But let's let God have his way. I don't, I'm not following nobody's method on how I should share the word. I'm just going to share how the Lord places on my heart. And so here we go. So James chapter 3. The tongue is a fire. Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we shall incur a stricter judgment. And I'm reading from the Hebrew Greek Keyword Study Bible, New American Standard Bible. For we all stumble in many ways. Yes, we do. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says now, he is a perfect man able to bridle the whole body as well mm. so God puts a premium on what we say death and life is in the power of the tongue We can create with our tongue. <clears throat> Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We have produced the fruit 
of fire without tongue. Proverbs 18.21 We can produce things without tongue. Some people say manifest. Um... Like Ecclesiastes three eighteen, it uses the word manifest. I said in my heart concerning a state of the sons of man that God might manifest them and that they might see that they they themselves are beasts. Luke eight seventeen, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. And I share those two scriptures to share that the word manifest is in the Bible. Right? And so God He He manifests things, He creates things, He brings things to pass. This tongue. We are made in the image of God. Let us not forget that people bless and curse with this this small thing in our mouths. In fact, the Bible says that if a person if they don't stumble in what they say, he is a perfect man. Like, that is powerful that God puts such a premium on our words. Because you think about it, in the, in the beginning, God said, let there be. Oh, my goodness. God spoke, and it was. Think back to the story, the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Think about the stories that we've heard when Pamela said, you ain't never going to be nothing. You just like your father. Think about when we've heard people say, Speak life over yourself. Look in the mirror every day and say, I am beautiful. And after a while, you believe it. This is not magic. This is a potential that God has given us as human beings. We are made in the likeness of God. In the beginning, right, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. And darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Then when we read Proverbs 18.21, Death and life and all and the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So something comes about, right? As a result of what we say. God puts a premium on what we say. Now if we put bits into the horses, verse 3. Now if we put the bits into horses' mouths so that they may obey us, we direct their entire body as well. So a big old horse, depending upon that bit 
if you put that bit into their mouth and someone broke this down I'm not gonna break it down because I have to study that part more but this bit in their mouth can direct their entire body as well behold the ships also though they are so great and are driven by strong winds are still directed by a very small rudder this big old ship that's great and it's driven by strong winds the direction it goes is based on the small rudder. So think about us. You mean to tell me that this tongue, what's in my mouth, can have me go a certain way? Jesus. Wherever the inclination of the pilot desires, what do we desire to say? And say it and then we're going to What are we creating with this tongue? What are we producing with this tongue? So also the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things. Behold, how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And when the, the Lord, sh I'm telling you, And the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among the members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. And that thing, the in that dream, like, it's a fire! It's a fire! The alarm, people are like, what? No. In your life, because the things that you are saying. Thank you, G. Some of us have burned relations, burned up relationships with this. Because what things we've said in private. You will have what you say. If you are saying negativity about an individual. Why in the world will God have you around them or have them around you? Repent. Repent. We need to repent. They don't like me. They this, they that. And you keep on saying it and it keeps on happening. He killed our machine, the Abo Sikia. And it's happening in your mind. He killed our Bobo Sikia about said today. They don't like me. What are you saying about them? Have you created a fire in the spirit realm and disintegrated the relationship? They don't want to be around me. They don't want to have nothing to do with me. They cut me off. No, did you burn it up in the spirit? Did you are you burning? Are you creating a fire? Jesus. And these are things we have to think about. What am I saying about situations and about people that seem to be like going haywire and just like Like it feels like it's just disintegrating. Are we creating fires with what the things we're saying? For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. Like, look what God had James write about the tongue. It says it is a restless evil. Like, we need God. You think about 
I'm gonna go. Thank you, Jesus. Social media, right? And I thank God that we have these platforms to share. But we can do some very serious harm to people. Excuse me. If we oh, I guess that came out. If we are not careful, we can do some very serious harm. As Christians, we need to be careful that we do not get caught up in the social media culture. And we keep it kingdom. We are kingdom people. The kingdom of God. We are in this world, but we are not of it. And my God, He almost shended it was in Help us, God. Help us, God. Because I know the temptation to say certain things. When we say certain things. But what happened about going into the secret place on behalf of one another and not share on to shame oh my shame did it was he can on my sin it's because we can say it he come on my shame did it was on these platforms don't mean that we should say it and even now I want to share something but I'm like God I don't want to shame anyone here. Oh, Jesus. We have to be so mindful that we are not participating in slander spreading rumors and gossip <sighs> all shaming on social media even in passing like one day I was sharing with someone right something that happened to me and the Lord said it's time for you to stop sharing that it's been so long and although it's a testimony um, and there's nothing wrong with sharing testimony but some things are so connected to other individuals that in sharing it you may be rehashing the wrong that they did and they've done repented and moved on let them go. And I'm not saying that God won't have us to share some things. But sometimes when we sharing, we we think like it doesn't affect other people. And it does. And I, I didn't mean no harm. But I just thank God for Holy Spirit. How he was like, you need not to share that anymore. Because you are painting a bad picture of that individual in other people's eyes. Now, they don't know the individual, but they may happen upon them. And this happened what? You talking maybe seven, six, seven, eight years ago. This person done repentant, done changed. And you talking about a moment in their life? And you and you you say you forgive them. There's so many other things that you could share, right? And again, I need to be careful 
and how I articulate this because I don't want to say like, oh, God won't have you to share it. But I think it's in, in tender situations like that, we really need to hear if God is saying share it. Because then he could cover any, 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 um, blow or he can stop any blow that could come as a result of it. Um, I pray that you understand what I'm saying. Holy Ghost, give understanding, please. Because cause I, I can't sit here and tell them, like, don't share this, don't share that, don't share something from your past. But what I am saying is that, especially when it's so connected to other individuals and it was hurt or wrongdoing involved, let us ask God, God, do I really need to share this part? You know, um, yeah. That was the second thing that I had wrote down. Um, from what I had mentioned earlier. And when I mentioned um, social media, and I just had a moment because I've seen some things on there, and oh my goodness. Somebody was, and I, I won't say names, and you won't know because it's, it happened so much, so much, but just to give you a scenario, um, someone was sharing something about another Christian, and what they shared was so humiliating, and they were wrong. Because the person was different. The person didn't do a sin. It was just that they looked different. And the individual posted something. And they didn't think about the person. They didn't think about the person's family. They didn't. And it was shaming. And I'm like, God, like. Let us not get caught up in that part of social media culture that is of the flesh. Slander, gossip, spreading rumors, lies, shaming people, talking about people. That's not who we are. And let us not get caught up in that in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. We need God to help us with our tongues. Can't tame it. But, man, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what God says. Give me your heart. Not just your words. Give me your heart. And let's, let's tell God what's really going on here. Right? In the core of our being. Let's tell God these things that are... Let's confess these things that are ugly and putrid. Because if we don't... And we bury it... God sees it. And it's going to come out. No one is in control of that. We may think we are. It's going to come out in some way. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And whether we understand whether how it could happen or if it's happening, God sees. There's th times where I was doing things I wasn't even aware of. Yeah, we can have self-awareness, but we're not perfect. We don't know everything about ourselves. We don't. We think we know, but we don't. But God knows everything about ourselves. God knows what we'll do in this situation three years from now. We think we know. And we can pray to know. And we can pray to do the right thing. But without God? Hmm. Okay.
So asking God to deal with this. What's in here? What's in our hearts? Because we can't tame our tongue on our own. And if something is going on in here, it's going to come out through our mouth. Out of, again, out of abundance of the mouth, the heart, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let me give you the verse. Um, Matthew 12 34 and then Luke's you can also read Luke 6 45 that's our connecting reference scripture from the same okay it says with it we bless our Lord and Father and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God so that's the dichotomy, right? That's the craziness. Like, without Jesus, oh my goodness. With it, we bless our Lord and Father and with it, curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both, come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brother, produce olives or vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh. The blessing is this. We don't have to do it on our own because we can't right how many times you say oh I'm not going to say that again he'd be like Ooh. right because yes God tells us to repent and he had me share that and we have to repent we have to repent however there is no condemnation for those that are Christ Jesus First John 1 John 1.9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so this is all a blessing not only will God forgive us, but he cleanses us, right? So we have to tell God these things. So, you know, some people don't want to hear about sin. But the blessing is there's no shame here. If you're, if someone, if you have a baby and they have on a stinky doo-doo diaper, you're not going to leave them in a stinky doo-doo diaper. It stinks. You're going to take it off. You're going to wash their boom boom. And you're going to throw the doodle in the diaper. The doodle. And you're going to put on the clean one. So we deal with stinkiness every day. We wash. We, we deal with stinkiness. We clean. We, You know? And sin is, is worse than stinkiness. It can produce, you know. It's, it, it, it's, 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 it's what it is. Sin. And no good is going to come out of it. Right? So we have to deal with it. But there's grace. Because God is merciful. And if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This tongue. We need God to help us tame it. And it's going to start in our heart, in our relationship with him. Right? Right? If a person doesn't have reverence and respect for God, already know they do not have reverence and respect for me. They may, even if they have shown me affection, and I appreciate that, but I know when the call of the wild comes, if their soul is not anchored in Jesus, or if that relationship with God, that vertical, that they it's just a matter of time before they're gonna do something, say something, or whatever to hurt me, others, and me. And the same with us. 
if God is not the one like centering us and we're not yielded to him we're going to say things we're going to do things and say things to hurt not only ourselves but others as well in that dream the other people were protect protected but there was a fire in our life things happened and i'm telling you when I look in the, in the natural, I could see how God was showing me. This is why this is like this. This is why this is like this. And this is why I like this. Because you created it with your tongue. Well, this, this is why that was like that. Because this happened some time ago. But I thank God for showing me that. And giving me understanding because the fire is out. He's so merciful. I didn't know that my tongue was creating a fire. You know, when someone asks me to um, do the live Bible study for James... I said I would pray about it and I just thank God for him putting it on that person's heart to even ask that because I've read James several times over and over and I've gotten you know some of what I shared up until now is some things that Lord had previously spoke to my heart you know but we grow on the Lord and God reveals to us more and help and help us and gives us additional um, um, revelation in terms of how, what the scripture, you know, understanding. He gives us interpretation and shows us how, um, the, how it applies to our life where we are, you know, you know, because we we are never in the same place at different seasons of our lives, and, and you know, we grow in the Lord, and you know. Um, you know, God reveals to us what we can handle. And, um, it's been so rich and so helpful. I mean, from day one, that first Bible study. And I was praying on there. And when I look back at the video, I wanted to take it down because I felt so vulnerable. And I was like, God, I'm looking crazy on this thing. Like the way that I was screaming and praying. And he wouldn't let me take it down. Because, you know, I know. And that's something I struggle with, with vanity. And if I feel like I don't look right or something look lopsided, whatever. I'm like, I'm, I'm, the Lord is like, because the quality of the Holy Ghost praying through me. I'm telling you, I saw God answer that prayer in my life. And although I was on here praying for not just myself, but for everyone, I could truly see, like, because a series of things start to happen, and the way I couldn't say certain things, and He would bring certain things that I had shared in those lives to my remembrance, and the Word, and... It's been a very beautiful, beautiful journey. And been repenting. I've been growing, um, maturing, being settled, and understanding like some things I just don't need to say. Some things I share a lot on here, but. It's probably a fraction of, a small fraction of my life. I'm known to a lot of people. <laughs> or, I shouldn't say a lot, but to some people. Because I don't know the numbers. Um, and I just thank God. I thank God for His Word. Um. And even in sharing now, it's like, whatever God is speaking to my heart is coming out. So, I'm hearing it. 
So although it's a video and it's going to help someone out there, it just helps me tremendously. Like I'm so blessed and powerful. God said, sit down and do this chapter today. And it's so much the Holy Ghost was speaking to my heart that as I was sharing this, I shared some of it. But of course, I didn't go into detail with everything he was speaking to my heart. But it's so awesome. And um, I'm going to continue because 13 to 18 is, um, is, I believe there's something to share here as well. Um, something that he wants me to share as well from here. Wisdom from above. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior, his deeds, and gentleness of wisdom. So, I've been in the book of Proverbs for so long and I was doing a scripture writing on it and I had to read each chapter reread then God give me a verse study it how he needs me to study it and write notes, prayers, just being it. And he was just making me wiser. Because you know, I've asked him for wisdom. Scripture says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And he gives it without ridicule. He, that means when it says he upbraided, it's not. He doesn't ridicule for what we don't know. He doesn't look down and say, why you don't know that? What's wrong with you? He gives wisdom. <laughs> and, um, he said, who among you is wise? This is what he had James write. And understanding. Let him show by his good behavior. And when I read the book of Proverbs and I think about how it has the opposites of, you know, God's ways and what's wrong, what's right and what's wrong. It is about how we behave, right? And this is not works. Because the Holy Ghost works in us to will and to do God's good pleasure. So, I'm not talking about doing these things in our own strength. But Holy Ghost helps us. You know, He teaches us and leads us into God all truth. God transforms us from glory to glory. And then we're reading we're reading God's word and we, we know the Holy Ghost, He brings to our remembrance what God says. And then God says, do this. And by God's grace, by His spirit empowerment Holy Ghost power God working us to where we can yield to God and put and, and God's good works his like you like let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so it's not our works but God's good works because we are God's workmanship created unto good works right so let him show how is wisdom and understand shown by good behavior. Wisdom, right? That's God's, we're living it out. His deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. I've had to repent of this thing. See, sometimes when we're talking about other people, is it bitter jealousy? Selfish ambition in your heart? Do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. 
Okay? Oh, because I'm so I'm sharing this with you. They not operating in wisdom. But all the time, it's bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in the individual's heart that's saying that about the other people. And God is saying, repent. Because you think you're operating in wisdom, but that this wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but it's earthly, natural, and demonic. So it's like we have to check if what we're saying is about is is it, it we're saying if we saying okay, I'm operating in wisdom, is it bitter jealousy or selfish ambition? God help us. Cause I know I've done this. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And still susceptible to it. <laughs> it could be something I'm doing now that I don't know that I do now in my life. And God is like, I'm, I'm going to come for that area. But again, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But when we are aware, we are when we are aware, we can say, God, forgive me. Right? Because it does not make sense. You know, not to tell God because he, he already knows, but it does something for us. Like, I remember someone that was telling me something, and believe me, I started feeling so jealous. And I was like, I didn't like feeling that way. I didn't like feeling that way. Who does, right? But God showed me why I was feeling that way. And... It had nothing to do with the individual. It had all to do with some undealt with issues in my childhood. And the enemy, he wanted, it was so, I felt so ashamed about it that, you know, my propensity at the time was to like, just bury it. Like, oh, like, chalk it up to something else. God was like, mm, no, you're jealous. You're jealous. But then I realized it had all to do with not even that I wanted what the person had, but my some insecure not my but some insecurities. I don't claim that stuff. I don't want to say my insecurities. No. No. I'm not claiming no insecurity. I'll say that's what I'm dealing with, but I'm not claiming anything as mine that God has not given me. I was dealing with some insecurities and some disappointment, um, hope deferred. And so, you know, and it seemed like things were moving along for this individual. And if it wasn't them, it was going to be somebody else. So, but God in his merciful, mercifulness and gracious has told me, just help me to confess it to him. And he dealt with it, right? And it showed me the why. So, you know, when we get understanding of things, it's like, oh, you know. And then we're not so, we're not, we're not, we're able to not beat up ourselves. But even if we don't have understanding yet, God is able to help us not beat up on ourselves. Just understanding that he loves us and he's working us through the process. He's able. But but the bitter jealousy and the selfish ambition, it says this wisdom is not that which comes from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. Listen to what God had James right here. Earthly, it's natural. Demonic. There's nothing to play with. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, and good fruits unwavering without hypocrisy in the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace I want to study this latter part more thank you Lord thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you, Father God. And Father God, I ask forgiveness for any bitter jealousy in my heart and selfish ambition. Forgive me for it. I renounce it all in the name of Jesus. Lord God, forgive me for speaking ill and wrongly of anyone in any situation. I ask, Father, that you deal with my heart. Heal me of any hurt and offense. I renounce bitterness and angerness, anger in the name of Jesus. I renounce everything that is not of you. I ask, Holy Ghost, that you taint my tongue. Put a watchman at the door of my mouth, Father God. That I will not say anything that will be offensive to you and hurt my neighbor or hurt myself thank you father for forgiveness of all sin thank you father for your mercy and your grace and your love towards me and others thank you for your word oh god thank you father god i ask father god that as um you have taught us everyone have different situations although some can be similar some can be very different and I just pray for the viewers right now of this video that you will have your will and your way in their mind in their heart in their lives what they do what they say where they go who they're with in the name of Jesus, that you will bless them, that you will strengthen them, that you will keep them, that you will draw them closer to you, that they will have encounters with you more and more, that they will be stronger in you, that you will continue to mature them up and settle and establish them. That they will get to know you more intimately. That they will be encouraged in you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. We thank you Father. We thank you Abba. And I said you forgive us all Lord. Forgive us all. Help us in the body of Christ Father God. Not. To fall prey to the aspects of social media culture that is offensive to you. Help us to renounce practices and ways of thinking that are not born of you. But that are born of this earth that's natural and demonic. Help us to release it and not partake of it in any way, shape, form or fashion. Thank you, Lord. And when you show us that we are, help us to repent and not be feel condemned, but to repent and to move on. Thank you, Lord, that this word is bound to our heart and that we will not be loose from it. We will walk and live out your word for your praise, honor, and glory, and that it will benefit our lives and the lives of those we encounter. And we thank you and we praise you, Abba, in Jesus' name. We ask. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so that's it. So, um, when I was seeing the repentance part, I had to personally repent. Um, I did ask God at the end to forgive us all, but everybody has to read. I can't renounce something for someone else, but I can ask God to help us renounce. So that's why when I said that part, forgive me forgive me because I realized that everybody has to do their own personal repentance um, even though there may be someone that acts generally for forgiveness for us all
but we all know where we are in terms of this word and I walk with the Lord and um, I do believe that God um, wanted me to do like a open repentance also as a model for other people to see as well because sometimes people don't know how to ask God for forgiveness and don't know it may seem like oh what that's not a big deal but we are all learning in this process and um sometimes God will have us share or do something so it can we're not saying that oh I'm teaching you but the Holy Spirit can teach um through what we share right um and so yeah and you know last but not least before I close it out I'm a teacher I'm a I'm a I teach students in special needs environments. I'm a school teacher. And, um, however, I do not um, openly state on YouTube that I'm some teacher of the word, some, you know, some um, guru or, you know, other terminologies that are out there. Um, I don't need to, or some, um, some evangelist or some prophetess or some prophet. No, I'm, I'm. See, many people don't don't care about titles. It's about how you treat them, right? And I don't need to. How can I say? Nothing wrong with sharing a title because sometimes God does have a share those things. But what I'm saying is more importantly is how I'm living God's word it's not the title right and sometimes I found in the past when I've had to when I've done that it was because I felt that I had to prove that I had authority and I had to prove that I had the right to say something or to be somewhere or to go somewhere and I realized that that's not necessary that's really not necessary God says say something I don't have to attach prophet or prophetess behind it or pastor or teacher or preacher. That's neither here nor there. That's not going to affect, that's not going to change a person's life. But what is, is the substance of God's word and God, the Holy Ghost working together in that individual. Um, and so, you know, I understand we need certain credentials to do certain things in life. There's nothing wrong with that. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But sometimes we want to boast in these things and call ourselves this and that and the third. And God is like, that is not necessary. Just open your mouth and say what I tell you to say. And if, I, if he tells you to say that, then say that. But it does behoove us to check out in our heart to see if it is selfish ambition, right? Um, I'm not quick to say that I am a t I like I said I'm a teacher I'm a school teacher that's a, a credential that I have with the New York City Department of Education I took a test and I became certified and licensed you know and you know it's, 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 it's my occupation it's my ministry it's my career you know as God will have it presently um, but in terms of um, a Bible teacher I don't need to call myself that, you know, um, I'm, I'm sharing what God placed on my heart to share, and have I taught the word, yes, I have taught the word, I have operated in that gift in ministry, um, and do I have the gift, yes, but you don't need to call me Rabboni, or Rabbi, or Teacher. That's not necessary. My name is Samantha. So now, now, with that being said, thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.